Little Fuzzy, H. Beam Piper, and the importance of cover art on vintage paperbacks. Um, H. Beam Piper was a uh, really good science fiction writer. He's, his works are very collected today, and uh, they're enjoyed by um, millions of people around the world. Um, he uh, was a uh, was a uh, author who wrote for the Pulp Digest, uh, Astounding Science Fiction for John W. Campbell and for other uh, Digest magazines in the 50s. Um, and he never really had any books published except one, which was uh, Murder in the Gun Room, 1953, which was a hardcover, and that was a mystery. And everything else that he wrote was science fiction. He wrote a lot of science fiction stories. Um, they were uh, about uh, his paratime uh, stories, which is uh, one of the one of the best uh, of them is Lord Calvin of Otherwen, uh, terrific terrific novel. Also Space Viking, and um, then there was Little Fuzzy. Um, um, Piper was born on March twenty third, nineteen o four, and he died on November sixth, nineteen sixty four. Um, he was a uh, author who lived in Pennsylvania. He was self-educated and he wrote libertarian style science fiction before uh, the you know writers really started writing libertarian science fiction. Uh, his story is a tragic one and it's something that's always uh, really bothered me because like uh, I, I did a previous video on Robert E. Howard who uh, committed suicide in 1936 at the age of 30 years old before his Conan stories became popular and uh, before he, he he would have been a, 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 a great heralded uh, fantasy heroic fantasy author and a horror writer and H. Beam Piper was the same uh, same way H. Beam Piper wrote a lot of very popular stories for uh, as I said John W. Campbell's astounding science fiction all the stories were in different digest magazines None of them were ever collected until, of course, after he died. He died in 1964 uh, by suicide. He shot himself. And um, one of the big reasons why he died was because of his, uh, the financial stress that was upon him. Uh, and there were other, other personal reasons also, a uh, divorce and things like that. But the, I think the main thing was the financial stress that was upon him. And um, his writing didn't seem to be taking off. There's a kind of a tragic uh, thing that happened with his writing. He wrote the three Little Fuzzy books. Little Fuzzy was a, uh, a creature that was adorable, cute, uh, an alien creature that was on this planet of Zarathustra. And um, what happens is there's a mining company on this planet and they want to just rip the rip the uh, the uh, the planet apart, but uh, a, an old man who lives there, uh, uh, who's a settler on the planet, kind of like H. Beam Piper himself, and he and even Michael Whalen in the cover art on one of the books makes it look a little bit like H. Beam Piper. Uh, that that character sees the uh, the fuzzies. And finds out that they, you know, makes friends with them, and finds out that they are more than just adorable little creatures. They are actually sentient creatures. They are thinking, feeling. They're another human race. And by proving that, that would stop the company from destroying the planet, which is their native habit habitat. And uh, there's a lot of a political intrigue that goes on, and there's a lot of, but the but the story about uh, Pappy with the with little Fuzzy. And uh, the, the, the Creatures is really just adorable. It's a wonderful, wonderful story. If you have not read these books, you've got to read them. The thing is, this is the first book in 1962. That's a little fuzzy from 1962. And it has a Victor Kalin cover art. Kind of looks like an Ewok almost, but much, much cuter. They're, they're, they're you know, just this is really not a very good cover. But Victor Kalin was a, was a very good cover artist, but he was 
an artist who did mostly crime and mystery covers and not really science fiction. But that's an adequate cover, and the book was very popular when it came out, so much so that they wanted another book. Um, and the thing is that what happened in 1964, the second book came out, uh, what today we know as Fuzzy Sapiens, because the Fuzzies were a, uh, uh, a human sapien type of creature, um, and uh, that book, the, the original title of it was The Other Human Race, and that's the cover. The thing is, the cover is just nothing, and I feel, and I've always felt, that it's the worst cover ever on a science fiction book or on any kind of paperback book. Uh, it's it's a, the kind of a cover that will not make a reader pick up the book or, or, or anything. What happened with this book is that, unfortunately, a lot of different things came together in Piper's life in 1964. The other human race came out, and it just, after the good sales of, of Little Fuzzy, the other human race came out, and it fell like a stone. Nobody bought it. There was no more interest in this series. Now, these were the only two books that Piper had written. Uh, aside from The Murder in the Gun Room in 1953, which was a mystery novel, hardcover, these are the only two paperbacks, pretty much, that, that Piper had. He had some ace doubles, uh, ace books that were uh, his um, um, uh, uh, digest uh, magazine stories that were put into ace doubles. But these were, um, and there's Lord Calvin of Other When and other books, uh, Space Viking, Cosmic Computer. But those were compilations of other stories. This was original, and this was something that he really thought was going to uh, make him be a, a voice in science fiction. And it would have, it would have. Um, the thing is that the cover was just so terrible that uh, the sales were terrible, and Avon didn't want any more books in the series, and that was it. The other thing that happened at the same time, um, Kenneth White, his agent, passed away. And unfortunately, and he was very close with his agent. His agent was a good friend. His agent was able to help him. With a lot of agents in those days used to give money, uh, loan money to, uh, to struggling authors and help them out in their, in their life because they, they needed money. And the agent would always uh, you know, give you some money up front to help you out. When Kenneth White died, not only did he did the Piper lose his uh, a good friend, a a person who uh, gave him good advice, a person who was able to help him sometimes financially, but also when he died, he neglected to tell him that he had sold uh, some other stories and and books and things of Piper's that uh, Piper didn't know about. So what happened was Piper looked at everything. His agent died. He wasn't selling anything. He was, was betting and hoping on Little Fuzzy and the other human race. And this cover, it came out with this cover, this terrible cover. And uh, it, it, it didn't sell. And I think if there's, it's probably the worst cover art on any paperback book ever. And it's, it's uh, if you can't see it, it's black with some blue uh, outline in it. You can't even make out what it is. It looks like a smudge. And it was, it was, it's just uh, terrible. It's terrible. And the, the book didn't sell. And uh, because of all of these financial problems uh, and others, I guess, you know, with the divorce and other things that were going on in his life, he committed suicide uh, in 1964 after this book came out when once it didn't sell. And um, it's, it's very sad. Um, the thing is that when afterwards, Jerry Pornell and other people who were fans of Piper and who knew him, um, you know, uh, brought back all of his works. And um, he had a lot of, a lot of stories that were published in, in def different series, in the Paratime series and in other, other series. And um, so there was a lot of uh, interesting things. What happened was Michael Whalen, the uh, 
great cover artist, um, did a lot of the covers for Piper's books. And this is the reprint, first printing by Ace of Little Fuzzy with Michael Whalen cover art. Kind of looks a little bit like H. Bean Piper. But you see now what the fuzzies look like. Just a, just a, you know, you got to look at the, the, the appearance of them. And then the other human race, which was changed, the title was changed to Fuzzy Sapiens. And here's the cover art by Michael Whalen for that book, Fuzzy Sapiens. It was a wraparound cover. And here's, here you see what the fuzzies really look like, uh, as opposed to what Victor Kalin made them look like in 1962. This is in uh, the 19, mid, middle 1970s, late 1970s, of what Michael Whalen drew them as. And he did just terrific cover art to show what they what they looked like. There's also a uh, a British a Orbit book. Not such great cover art, but uh, better than the. Uh, than the Avon from 1964. So up until in the 70s, this was the Piper revival, which started with Little Fuzzy and Fuzzy Sapiens, and then a whole lot of other books. And um, they published a lot of his books, uh, a, a lot of his stories in, in various books. Um, but for a, a long time, there was people like were really getting into the Little Fuzzy books. And they says, like, what happened after this one? Because he left it open for a sequel. And uh, said so everybody, you know, nobody knew what happened, uh, what was going to happen. Uh, people were wondering, they, well, this is a wonderful series. There should be another book. So what happened was um, they, they uh, Ace got together with, with William Tunning, who was a, a very good, uh, good author. And he wrote Fuzzy Bones, which is the sequel to uh, Little Fuzzy and Fuzzy Sapiens. Uh, this is around 1980, again with the Michael Whalen cover art. And you can see the fuzzies, how adorable they are. They're really charming, cute, intelligent, fun. And, and Piper wrote these books. I mean, they are charming. They are wonderful fun to read. William Tunning, who passed away early, it's almost like the Piper curse, maybe, I don't know. He, he wrote a couple of books, and then, uh, and then this one, and then he, he passed away much too soon. But he wrote, a, he left us a terrific book that is good, uh, fits in good with the series. Um, later on, Ardeth Mayhar, a Texas uh, woman, a writer that I knew, wrote um, Golden Dreams of Fuzzy Odyssey. Uh, another book that just had about the about the fuzzies, and um, it's a wraparound cover by uh, I think Michael Whalen also. So Michael Whalen did a lot of covers for H. Beam Piper books, and he did them the way they should have been done. And again, you look at this abortion of a cover art. I mean, do you expect that that book would sell? Do you expect that anybody would read that? Uh, H. Beam Piper's name is so small, you wouldn't even know who wrote it. I mean, it's just terrible. And, and, and I, I believe that that cover art contributed in some way to his downfall and to his, uh, to his anxiety and stress. And uh, that book, in some way, almost killed him. I mean, it, I mean uh, almost, almost, you know, well, it did, contributed, let me put it that way, contributed to his, his death and suicide, I think. I honestly think that. And um, so there were other books published, uh, many of his books in the revival of the 1980s uh, due to uh, Jerry Pornell uh, and Ace Books, published a whole lot of H. Uh, Beam Piper books. I'm not going to show them all because there's so many of them. But there was even a hardcover by the Science Fiction Book Club, Fuzzy Papers, and you see that they use the same cover art as the William Tunning book. This is my copy is a little faded. It's uh, from 1977. It's from a while back. You'd think like 
Okay, so that's the end of the story. All of the, you know, you had the two books came out. They were reprinted better with the Wayland cover art and uh, other books uh, by Piper collected his stories in, in, uh, by series uh, and, and they're really excellent. Uh, and you had two books written. Uh, uh, one was a sequel and one was a kind of a prequel. Okay, and then, then there was something else though. There was a rumor for a long time that um, there was a third fuzzy book, and um, this rumor was that uh, after the, after H. Beam Piper wrote the uh, the second book in the series, the one that was canned and, and died and never sold, that he had actually written a third book in the series, but nobody knew anything about it. Um, it, it had uh, it never been published. Nobody found a manuscript. And uh, for many, many years, uh, it was just a rumor until somebody did find a manuscript and it was published. And it was published as Fuzzies and Other People, the third long lost fuzzy book. So this was the actual sequel, uh, sequel the third book in the Fuzzy Trilogy by H. Beam Piper. So you had the first two books and then William Tunning wrote a, uh, a third book to kind of tie up the series in his in his way, which was really well done. And then finally, after so many years, they found the, the lost manuscript. And there's Fuzzies and other other people with a Michael Whalen cover. And uh, it's it's a wonderful uh, it's a wonderful novel. And um, it's very, just very interesting what cover art can do. I think that uh, that Avon cover, which I hate, and uh, I don't know who was involved in having that decision, but uh, boy, I mean, it really did contribute, I think, to the, uh, well, it, 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 it made the, the books non, the book non-sellable, so the book didn't sell, so his, his contract got canceled, the third book was never published, uh, and he must have looked at it as, as, as far as a writer, he was, uh, was a failure and he was, things were going nowhere and he committed suicide and it's so sad because uh, it was so needless. And had he not done that, had he lived and, and um, you know, he would have, so that's 64, 74, 84. So if he lived to be uh, 80 years old, another 20 years, he would have been in the middle of the, of the H.P. Piper revival of dozens and dozens of books. Well, you're assuming he wouldn't have written anything else. Oh, he would have written Yes, yeah, so he wouldn't have had stuff. to wait that long. Yeah, but I mean, it's just, you know, you just think about that. Also, there were people, uh, you know, great writers like uh, John Scalzi, who wrote uh, a book for a tour called Fuzzy Nation, which is another book in the Fuzzy series, a more recent book. Um, and um, so there's a lot of, there's a, there's a lot of things that uh, that could have happened, you know, had he uh, had he not committed suicide, had he not left us, and uh, it's a shame because he was a terrific writer. His stories are great. Uh, I love the Lord Calvin of Otherwen stories. I love Space Viking, and I love the Little Fuzzy stories. All of them are just terrific. An interesting thing, like Space Viking, there's a there's an Ace uh, earlier paperback from the '60s, but. Ace reprinted them again with Michael Whalen covers. And uh, it's interesting because this is the first Ace printing of Space Viking with a Michael Whalen cover. And then um, the fourth Ace printing from 1980, yeah, they used the same cover art, but they reversed the cover art. That's just a, just a little interesting thing about like how cover art, you know, is uh, oftentimes uh, changed, reversed. Sometimes they use it to blow it up. Sometimes they'll reduce it, whatever. But uh, they use different type. But the cover art is reversed on Space Viking too. So just wanted to uh, I just wanted to do this video about Little Fuzzy and H. Beam Piper, uh, uh, a, a, a author who is tremendously talented, who uh, I never knew, I never met, and uh, but. Uh, 
I've met him through his his works, and I've, I've enjoyed everything that I've read by him. And uh, he's written a lot of good stuff that uh, if you haven't read it, you should give it a try. Uh, it's space opera, it's adventure, it's action, it's heroes and villains, and uh, and and interesting aliens and interesting science fiction. It's good stuff. And um, hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give us a thumbs up and a like and a share. And we'll see you next time. Thanks.